Hi, Robin with OxyDry. And uh, it's a Saturday, and I'm actually working today. <laughs> That's okay. I had a couple of days off this last week. I'm not trying uh, to push too hard these days. Um, but anyway, um, this is a carpet that I have actually cleaned uh, quite a few times. It's about 12 years old. This is a nylon. Um, and it is actually quite grubby. That, by the way, is a fresh hot chocolate spill that happened within the last couple of days. She said, I just talked to her about that, and she said she just put some water and bought it out last night, actually. She discovered it when she moved the chair, and the kids hadn't told her that it got spilt down there. <laughs> anyway, um, this carpet is uh, is a nylon, um, and I'm not sure if you can... Oh, go on. Little visitor. Go on, go on, go on. Go on. <laughs> hey, funny guy cute little doggy and he's actually one of the problems <laughs> of course they've always had dogs and cats in the house and I've been cleaning this carpet for nearly uh, the whole time I think but um, she's not doing it often enough at all and with the um, amount of uh, um, wear and tear there's a couple of kids uh, pets uh, dogs and that's a relatively new doggy so puppy and he's pee peed in here a few times and uh, cat or two um, and um, I vacuumed the carpet and um, I got uh, my vacuum almost half full this room and I have a, a, a fairly large master bedroom upstairs as well to do and it's really again quite soiled um, sh they're not doing it often enough and with the amount of uh, wear and tear that's going on in here there's a, a door there coming in from the backyard over there and tracking out a lot of soil I mean look at the the uh, steps are quite, you can see they're quite bad. Anyway, um, and she's been cleaning it herself. So she gets me in every two or three years. I think it's been about three years since I've been here um, to kind of bring the carpet back as much as I can. And in the meantime, she's um, spotting it. You can see there's, she's been taking, there's lots, lots of little light spots where she's taken out a spot or two. And um, she's been using a Kirby shampooer on it. Now, there's, the Kirby shampoo itself is not a, really an issue, but if you're not really um, taking the time to really give the carpet a really thorough vacuuming, and obviously she hasn't been, even though she has a Kirby, she's just moving too fast with it. I actually just explained to her how to use the Kirby and discovered, um, when I asked her how she adjusted it, and discovered she was doing the typical error, which is to put it down to its lowest possible setting. And vacuuming like that and that actually smothers the airflow um, and it actually picks up very poorly when it's incorrectly set uh, so I showed her how to do that and uh, that'll help to keep the carpet much better in between cleanings so anyway um, so I'm cleaning this carpet I'm gonna go over it first of all with a brush <coughs> and I have not sprayed anything I have not pre-sprayed I've not pre-spotted and you're probably wondering well why would I not do that and I'm going to show you why. Um, because my pre-spotting and pre-spraying, as it were, is all going to be done using my rotary. Because I'm going to go over the area, first of all with the brush, and work in the cleaning solution um, quite quickly. And then I'll go over it again slowly. And then I'll switch over to Iron Man pads and, and do it that way. Um, there's no point in... Um, and going beyond that in, in a case like this. Now, um, I'm also, so I'm running at two ounces per gallon. There's two gallons in there right now. And I also just put in, uh, I'm gonna boost it with, um, well, I'll show you what we, I'm gonna use, sitting right here. Rad radical rinse, that works really well. It has a bit of an orangey, lemony smell. Um, has um, a proxy in there as well and, uh, and of course I actually increased the uh, the CLO2 as well up to 2000 ppm in this case and I mixed up as you can see I mixed up the uh, uh, rin radical rinse in here in hot water let it dissolve completely before I put it into my tank because the water in there is cold it wouldn't dissolve if I put it in cold water or very poorly anyway <laughs> So now let's uh, let's go to work. See how this works. 
This is the exact same carpet I have in my mudroom. Just dropped into, just dropped into the um, the, cl the clutch and the um, um, brush. Just just dropped, just snapped together. And I'm going to give it a little blip. Make sure I'm engaged, and I'm engaged. So here we go. So I'm going to go, and of course I'm working away from my power source as usual, right there. So I'll work away from that. I'm going to move fairly quickly on here. And this area here really doesn't need a, a lot, so I'm not applying very heavy right now. But I'm moving pretty quick. This is my newer brush, which I have two identical brushes. They're actually quite a soft bristle. And uh, this one is newer, so it is a little bit stiffer, doesn't have quite as much of a set to it, and the bristles are a little bit longer, and uh, so that's why I chose to use this brush, because it has a bit more bite than my other one, so I choose the one that I think is best suited for the carpet I'm dealing with. Obviously, I'm moving a little bit slower here and I'm flying a little bit heavier because this is the more uh, heavily trafficked and soiled area and of course this machine is turning that brush three complete revolutions every second 360 degrees at the front of the machine it's moving to the left at the left side of the machine, it's moving toward me. At the back of the machine, it's going to the right. And at the uh, right side of the machine, it's moving that way, away from me. So it's coming out the fibers from every side. And um, every time I've cleaned this carpet, she's uh, <laughs> managed to make it a challenging situation but it always turns out really well and uh, she's really thrilled every time so but it'll sure make a difference if she's uh, um, going to use that Kirby the right way I'm pretty sure I showed her that last time but maybe, maybe I didn't okay I'm going to go back to, the, to where my power is and again work my way this way it's just so much easier than trying to kick that wire out of the way all the time. And I prefer to go forward because my light's shining that way too, of course. So I'm able to see what's happening on the carpet. over there it, it's looking it's looking pretty good all right spin about and then I'll head down this way I won't put the brush under the chair over on the left there because that's uh, where it actually sits. So there's no uh, nothing underneath there. I'll be running over that with the Iron Man though. Now this is where the chocolate milk disaster happened. I'm going to give a little bit extra there. When I vacuumed it, I did realize that it was actually wet. But anyway, that shouldn't be a 
no problem getting that out of there. I probably don't really need to go over this area where I'm at, right where I'm at really with the brush but uh, because it's really not very soiled right here but I'm going to anyway. It'll just take a couple of extra minutes. Not a big deal. I guess one of the reasons that I, when I'm dealing with these scenarios that they're so bad that I don't even, usually don't even bother pre-spraying is because uh, I've, uh, my thinking is that I've got this solution so um, boosted that it basically becomes like the pre-spray and if I am going to apply it like I am with either brushing or using the fiber pad to work it in, that's like, uh, you know, applying a pre-spray and agitating all at the same time. And then, of course, then I switch back over to the Iron Man anyway, and and uh, so what's the point of pre-spraying? Because uh, there's stains on the carpet, by the way, that maybe the camera doesn't show them, but they're coming out before my eyes anyway. So it works. It just works fine doing this. scrub a little bit more so I'm slowed down a little bit just let the brush just let the brush do its thing this area right here is really quite worn I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up very well but this the uh, I guess so so much traffic back and forth across here my own carpet which is the same one at home it um, there's no under pad underneath it. I just put it out on a linoleum in the laundry room, or the mud room actually, and it didn't take long before the texture of the pile disappeared because it, uh, well, it's not a really a hard wearing carpet anyway. The steps are going to be um, challenging. I will, on the steps, I'm actually going to use the black um, brush on the arc first, and then I'll use uh, at least a couple of. Uh, gladiator pads but they've uh, boy, they're, they're really quite bad now there was uh, a fair amount of uh, stains in this area here and they all appear to be gone now so and I'm just going to go over this way a little bit extra so the area where I'm standing on right now has been actually sitting for about 15 minutes so that's plenty of time for dwell time for a pre-spray. That's the way I see it anyway. <laughs> okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to here. And I'm going to switch over to 
to the Iron Man. And of course, there's my brush. Looking good. Put that there for the moment. Again, I want to engage the uh, dry block. It dropped in place. Just give it a little blip, and I'm uh, clutch is engaged, and away I go. Ooh, it's actually binding, <laughs> which means it's too dry because I didn't apply very much over here. So I just applied a bit of solution on the pad there because I could feel the how dry the carpet was. <coughs> ah, pardon me. So there were some marks here and they do appear be gone. It was really blotchy looking in this area and it's looking very even now. These nylons uh, really do clean very well. But it really is right at the bottom of the steps here. You can really see how uh, the pile is very, very, um, the uh, texture, the pattern, and the carpet is pretty much gone right there. It just looks like fur now. Okay, I'll go back over to the beginning. from the power. I'm overlapping a little bit on the right here, of course, as I move my way forward. and smooth, nice and quiet, these, uh, this machine, and uh, this is the MD-180, imported by Mastercraft, made by Clean Fix in Switzerland, unfortunately they don't make it, or import it anymore, maybe they do make it, I don't know, but Mastercraft was selling it, uh, but they are no longer selling this particular model which is unfortunate because I think it's the best uh, suited rotary for this purpose. But uh, unfortunately they are not selling it anymore. And I know there's Canadian guys that are watching my channel, so, and uh, you're wondering, well, what is a good rotary to get? Uh, and unfortunately for us Canadians, we can't just see a machine on a website in the U.S. and order it up because a lot of these companies don't import to Canada. However, there is an option. 
There's a Canadian manufacturer called Centaur and they make a very good machine. Um, it is a it uses a 19 inch drive block but the Iron Man will fit on that of course because uh, um, Iron Man is 19. I'm not sure if they make a bigger one or not but anyway. Um, and it actually has a, a really unique feature where the um, the bell of the machine will disconnect and it'll it'll um, downsize to a 13 inch and they have a 13 inch drive block as well so you can make it a 13 inch machine the two speed version of it is I believe 70 I think it's 77 pounds so it's right in the right weight range um, they're a very um, good machine I've actually owned one years ago um, and um, clean quip K-L-E-E-N-Q-U-I-P in Toronto, I believe they are, is a distributor for them. Uh, and you go on the Centaur website and uh, there's lots of information there. You can get them to send you a brochure. I actually did that last night. I was wanting to check out what their machine was looking like. And they actually changed something on it since I had it. And the handle release is now actually up at the top of the handle so that's a really good good feature they didn't have that on the machine that I had years ago but because um, uh, my handle releases here on their machine it's a knob right here you just would spin off and then it would go up and down and then you tighten it again so that's a, a really handy feature particularly for residential work And the machine actually will um, uh, tear down in like a, one minute, pop the handle off, so you could actually carry it the trunk of a car if you needed to. And they have um, accessories like a tank, and of course brushes and um, the drive block and things like that. So, um, and um, anyway, uh, yeah, that's a good choice for us in Canada, I think. Because uh, even a, there's a couple of manufacturers in the states that, or suppliers in the states that would sell to us in Canada, but by the time we pay the dollar difference in the shipping and everything, well, it starts adding up. And the, I believe the Centaur is around about three thousand dollars, which may sound like a lot of money, but in the big picture, it really, I guess, it really isn't. That's not your biggest concern. Is the cost of your machine. It's um, it's just the way that it is. We 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 see prices for rotaries on some websites in the states, and they're six or eight hundred or nine hundred dollars or whatever. And well, <laughs> surprisingly, not as dirty as one would have thought. Here, right? <laughs> interesting how the different soils um, look differently on different carpets. So interesting. I was expecting it to look a lot worse. So anyway, if you're in Canada and you're wanting to get into the <coughs> business here <coughs> and you're looking for a rotary, the Centaur is a very well made machine uh, and it's, it is actually made in Canada. Um, interesting story of the history of that company too an immigrant fellow I'm not sure where he came from but uh, Anthony Adelkis I think his name is or, although I believe he sold the company a couple of years ago and uh, now there's a couple of a couple of guys I think that are running it they send me in for um, emails uh, every, every once in a while because I have had communication with them. Um, and I don't mind that. Uh, they do a stone, uh, like a marble polishing course, which is 
if, if there's uh, if something you want to, or you're interested in, uh, that would be, um, and you have the business, it certainly is a, a pretty lucrative business, actually. Um, I considered it, and I uh, actually took a couple of courses, three courses, actually, on uh, um, tile and grout cleaning and marble polishing and stuff, and in the end, I decided just, I just couldn't go in too many directions. I just want to clean carpets, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm a simple guy. So it's it's looking really good, um, very even looking, which is what I, of course, I'm always after. Um, I'm not sure whether I'll post vacuum or groom this carpet. I'll when I'm done upstairs and done the steps and I'm ready to do that, I'll probably check to see how, how um, wet it feels. And if it feels too damp, then I'll just groom it. I'll just feel it right now. Uh, not bad. It's not soaking. Probably a little bit wetter than I normally would have it. And I used, uh, how much have I used? I can't quite see that. Not quite a gallon. Okay. The room upstairs is actually um, smaller square foot, but it is a even thicker trip. Well, that was dumb. <laughs> That's never happened before. So it's coming along nicely. It's amazing this carpet when I clean it. I often, when I first get here, I'm often sort of gulp. <laughs> But it always turns out really well, and she's always really happy with how it, how long it stays clean. Uh, she was getting it steam cleaned years back, and it was just resoiling right away for her. She's been a regular customer for many years, and she's given us lots of work, recommended us to many of her friends and family, etc. And uh, yeah, that's great. I've got lots of customers like that. All the, it looks like all the stains have come out. So far, anyway. I haven't actually had to even grab my spotter on the tank and use it on anything. which is uh, interesting, because there were a lot of stings. <clears throat> Hopefully that chocolate milk stain won't be a problem because she wetted it. I'd rather it have uh, been left and dry it out and then I can deal with it. It's possible that it could wick if she overwetted it. But anyway, if that's an issue, I'll deal with it. She's got a 30 day warranty. I think I've actually had to come back one other time. Oh, that wasn't very skillful at all. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look. Um, it's just surprising how, how um, how this was not as, didn't get anywhere near as dark as I would have thought it would. 
but uh, it, it's funny how certain soils, you know, you think sometimes the carpet doesn't look that bad, and when you look at the pad and you're done, it's just black, and other times it looks bad, and when you finish the pad, it doesn't look that bad at all. So it's funny how soil works. Different soils have different characteristics, I guess. Anyway, so well, that's what I, I'm done in the basement here, other than grooming it. So I'll head on upstairs and, and uh, continue with this job. And uh, I'll let you go now. So have a good day.